like one of these, ah, shucks, you know, that kind of thing. But I am here to tell you, Saudi Washington and Howard Isley just coached their backsides off. I knew when I spoke to many of you yesterday, I was confident that I could manage a game. Those two guys, just absolutely extraordinary. And to the Big Ten Network, and I'll say the same to you, what you're seeing there are two future head coaches. Okay? America needs to know that. America needs to know that. When I spoke to Juwan Howard last night, he said, I feel fine. I have the best coaching staff in America. And again, I get it. You know, it's a story, the whole, my whole background. But that was Saudi Washington and Howard Isley. And then those young guys, those young guys. Before they went on the court, I asked them to play hard, to play smart, and to play together. And they played together. They were connected 15 strong. Because not, what, not just what you saw on the floor, but think about that. Musa Diabate and Terrence Williams played scout team. Right? And they didn't, they weren't half in, right? Around here, you're four feet. You're, both your feet and your hands are in, or you're not around here. That win was because of the character that Jawan Howard has insisted that we recruit to. So I'm just, I'm uh, humbled to serve and to serve with Saudi and, and Howard and Jay Smith and Chris Hunter. You know, everybody did their thing. Everybody did their thing. And not just for these 40 minutes, but since the lab, whatever it is now. You know, 72 hours, is it 80 hours? I don't know. But those guys deserve game balls and letter jackets or whatever the heck you give them for it. But they did it, really. A lot of times in an emotional situation, you see teams respond either one way or the other. And when it's positive, that first game out of the shoot is filled with so much energy. But then you watch the tape and all. How do you keep this and how do you bottle this going forward? I don't know. I really don't. Because I will uh, suggest to you that uh, Tuesday's practice was not, Tuesday's practice was that like dip. Monday was solid, Tuesday was the dip. And uh, what I think with all that's going on, you know, with all that went on and then all that's going on, okay? So, well, how many wins do we need? Or what, and you have five games. No, we don't. We don't. We had, we had yesterday and today. Now we're off tomorrow. And uh, when you have a leader like Eli Brooks, we'll, we'll, have their attention. we'll have their attention on Friday to play an afternoon game uh, on, on Sunday against you know, a nationally ranked team. But in, in this league, it, tonight is tonight. And tomorrow, we'll, do, we'll deal with that. But we do have off, which is a big deal. To your point, it's a big deal to have a day off. And to, you know what, everybody needs to breathe, right? Everybody around here. Administration, staff, players, everybody needs to breathe. And now, Friday can be about basketball. Over here with Steve. Okay, go. Caleb was talking to us about how you stressed everybody needs to be the best version of themselves. Talk about that and talk about the version that you got tonight, particularly of, of Caleb and how important his scoring is to this team winning. Well, him, him scoring opens the floor. I, I, I just made mention to somebody, uh, I don't know how long it went in the second half before Hunter got a shot. Right? I just, I, did, I didn't know. And, but Caleb was shooting the ball, right? To me, to me, 
and, I, and I'm not a shooting instructor or anything, but the only thing that's important for Caleb Houston's level shooters is the next shot, not the last shot. And for long periods of time this year, you've all watched him, it's the last shot that, even in practice, the last shot. No, let, let the ball go. Let the ball go. Like, I, I thought one of the best plays that Caleb made all night, they went zone one time in the first half, he cut back door, and, and it was a great pass, and I think the kid erased his layup. But you know what, I got a layup against the zone, that, that's like processing the game. So, uh, look, he, he has a brilliant stroke. He has a brilliant stroke. And, but he hasn't been beaten down by, uh, oh my God, I'm, I, you know, they don't think I'm that anymore. Or they're questioning this. He, he, he puts in an awful lot of work on his own. He's got his own little managerial crew that works with him. He'll be in here tomorrow morning shooting. Um, and the idea of the best version, that's always been a big deal to me. And, and, it, and it became um, uh, amplified with everybody saying, well, what are you going to do without Musa? What are you going to do without Terrence? Well, you can't, Musa is a different player than anybody else we have, and so is Terrence. So if everybody was to come in, everybody was to come in, and at the end of 40 minutes say, I was the best version of myself, and it didn't go our way, walk out with your head high. But if one guy wasn't the best version of himself, shame on us. Shame on, shame on you and shame on us. Because this was about representing their families, this was re about representing Michigan, and this was about representing their teammates. And I, I give them five stars, each and every one of them, for the way they performed. Right. Coach, 21 minutes for Kobe. What's the difference between the kid that you got initially at the beginning of the season and now you're going to earn that much play time? Obviously, the, the shortened bench helps. Yeah, the shortened bench, bench helps. But again, work. It's, it's, it's work. And, and the right, um, not that he was focused on the wrong things, but focused on, on the things that are important here. Like he got really angry with himself in the second half because he allowed a dribble drive. That wouldn't have happened six weeks ago. It definitely didn't happen three months ago. So again, it's, it's growth. And it's really interesting with Kobe because I talked to him one day, his jumper looks different, right? His jumper looks different. And I said, what are you doing and he said, I study Eli. He said, I like how Eli get. And I said, well, then take it a step further and study Eli's game. Like Eli comes off of those handoffs on a sprint. Eli's the best perimeter defender. Okay, so study the whole, not just his jumper, but study the whole game, the whole thing. And, uh, you know, just me. I'm not one that says, Oh my God, great shot. But on the pull up on the fast break, I went, Oh my God, great shot. <laughs> Larry? Bill, can you share uh, your emotions with that big hug you got uh, before you went into the tunnel? Um, I, w I would put it to you this way um, I'm here to serve. And uh, to be acknowledged for serving uh, is, is very much appreciated. Okay? But I will share this with you, and I share this with the players, the last statement I made to them before they went on the court. Ward Manuel did not ask me to try to coach the team. But I try, he said, do it. So I did it, and, I, and I, I, I mean that, I don't mean that singularly, like we did it, uh, and the players did it, because 
No one said try. They asked us to do it. Andrew? With uh, you know, being a head coach again after a few years of not doing it, whether it's just like, I guess, riding a bike or whether <laughs> there are times when you had to remind yourself, uh, yeah, I'm responsible for this now. Uh, someone else. Uh, well, I would say this. I, I, would, I, I would say it this way. Uh, all day today, all day today, I've, I realized, like, yo, you're back. And the way I knew it is my stomach was a mess. <laughs> and, you know, the, the people that, uh, you know, I don't believe that they were superstitions, they were rituals, okay? But for a very, 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 very long time, on a game day, I would not speak to anybody. I would not shave. I would not shower. I would not eat. I didn't want to really be engaged. And then my, my grandson, who some of you may know the story, he, st he was living with us, and he started to want to be around me on game day. My own wife, like she doesn't count the day game days as days we've been married. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and so today, I was like, oh, I got up and it started. And it really only, it, it dissipates only at one, at one moment in time. When I walk out of the tunnel here, when I walk on the court. Because at that point in time, to be honest with you, the work is done. It's now them, them playing the game and following the plan and yeah, you have to work the officials and call the timeouts and do all that kind of stuff, make the substitutions. Uh, but uh, somebody in Philadelphia sent me a text today and said, you know, like, wh what are you going to do? You got to stand up for three hours. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I felt like I was in a bubble. And uh, I, I do want to make mention, and <clears throat> uh, the maze rage, the ovation that they gave me when I went out there was meant a lot. Tom? You know, I, I've talked to several former players in the last couple of days, and they, they all behind the program, and they, and they think this could be that galvanizing moment where the team unites and has a nice run, five runs in the, in the regular season, Big Ten tournament. Do you feel some galvanization going on, potentially moving forward? I don't want to minimize that, and I want to say this, that this program today and those players today maximize this day. The challenge is daily improvement. So tomorrow they need to maximize their day, even though it's an off day. And then we go... I, I've never been a huge fan of this, like, this, I believe each game is a separate entity. So now we have a challenge on Friday to prepare for Illinois. But I will say this, when you see smiles and when you hear laughter, it's easier to make your point about the very next challenge. And I can't be any, I can't be any more emphatic about this day off tomorrow is like gold for all of us. Cool.